all right welcome back to the next part of this series and now in the chapter of radioactivity we will cover the topic of half life and we will basically look at how quickly radioactivity happens how does it slow down and what happens to the rate of decay and the number of nuclei inside the sample when uh, during the process of radioactivity so we will take again one uh, iodine 131 as an example so let's say you have a sample of iodine 131 and it decays by beta emission in order to turn into xenon so these dark purple circles in the sample represent iodine and the light purple circles in the sample will refer to as xenon nuclei now to begin with we have all the nuclei all the 40 million nuclei uh, as iodine all of them are still iodine and none of them have decayed yet and there are total of 40 million nuclei inside the sample right eight days after eight days have passed what we notice is that half of those nuclei have now decayed and you can see that half of them are still undecayed so 20 million iodine nuclei are left so they are still undecayed whereas 20 million of them are now xenon after eight more days so eight more days have passed and now we have a total of 16 days there are 10 million iodine nuclei left so 10 million undecayed nuclei whereas the rest of them have now turned into xenon so what you notice is that in the first eight days the value decreased from 40 to 20 it halved and then in another eight days the value again halved from 20 to 10 and then what do you expect will happen in the next eight days so at 24 days after another eight days we are going from 10 million undecayed nuclei of iodine to only 5 million undecayed iodine nuclei so that means that the number has halved again right the number has been divided by two once then it's divided by two again and then it will half again and then what do you expect will happen at the end of 32 days well if you have five you should expect to get 2.5 million right and then another eight days so at 40 days it should be 1.25 million and so on and so forth now let's do a simple analysis the total number of nuclei in the first at zero days or 40 million iodine uh, nuclei were 40 million so all the total nuclei were basically all of them were iodine whereas there was zero xenon nuclei after eight days what happens to the total number of nuclei well it's still 40 the number has not changed because the nuclei have not disappeared they've just disintegrated and become something else so now there's only 20 million iodine left and the rest of the 20 have turned into xenon right and then after another eight days the total number is still 40 but iodine nuclei are now 10 and xenon number is now 30 and then at the end we have 40 again how many iodine only 5 million and then obviously there would be 35 million xenon so which number is actually halving each time what numbers becomes half with each uh, with every eight days it's this number it's the number of iodine nuclei right you can't say that uh, so there's a slight misconception uh, misconception among students and they usually tend to say that number of xenon uh, nuclei the daughter nucleus will actually double with every half-life but that is not the case it is obviously increasing but you see it goes from 0 to 20 and then it goes from 20 to 30 and then it goes from 30 to 35 so it's not doubling after every eight days but iodine is becoming half after every eight days and what happens to the total number of nuclei well 
total number of nuclei remains the same. So there is, uh, if they ask you, let's say, what is what is happening to the total mass? The total mass or the total number of nuclei in the sample sample is has not changed, right? Then what happens to the original nucleus, the undecayed nucleus in the sample? That becomes half after every half-life. So you just divide, keep dividing it by two after every half-life. And what happens to the daughter nuclei, the, the new nucleus, which is basically which is basically forming as iodine decays. So in this case it is xenon. Well, that increases, but don't say that it doubles, right? So whatever we have discussed is written here. But now you need to learn and understand the definition of half-life. So what would you describe or how would you define half-life? For any radioactive isotope, its half-life is the time taken for undecayed nuclei to reduce to half of their previous value, right? So after every half-life, after every one half-life, the number of undecayed nuclei will be divided by 2. Now there is another definition of half-life that we need to learn which is pretty similar but in, it involves a different quantity. Now this has to do with the rate of decay. When we are measuring the activity using the GM tube, if you remember that, when it gave us the count rate, it's basically giving us the activity or a measure of the activity not exactly the activity but a measure of the activity of the sample now what do we mean by activity it basically means how many decays are happening per second or the time could be uh, of your choice you could say per minute or per hour so basically what we are um, quantifying here is the rate of decay rate of decay how quickly something is decaying and rate of decay is basically called activity. And activity, um, the measure of activity can be given by the count rate on GM tube. Now, the activity of the sample basically reduces as the number of undecayed nuclei also reduce. We can look at this and we can understand this point by looking at our diagram, the previous diagram again. In the first eight days, how many nuclei decayed? How many nuclei decayed? 40, uh, 20 million iodine nuclei are disintegrated. So the number reduced from 40 to 20. In the next eight days, how many nuclei decayed? The number reduced from 20 to 10. So only 10, nu uh, 10 million nucle nuclei decayed. So you can see that the number of nuclei that that is decaying in the same amount of time has now reduced and then how many disintegrations took place in the next eight days only five took place so you can see that the rate of decay reduces as time goes on so what we can say is that as the number of undecayed nuclei decays uh, becomes less the activity of the sample also becomes less. So we have another definition of half-life which is pretty similar to the previous definition. It is given as the time taken, this time for activity to reduce to half of the original value. So as the number of undecayed nuclei is divided by 2 with each half-life, the activity or the count rate is also divided by 2 after every half-life. Now half-life of every isotope is constant. Half-life is constant of every isotope, right? And each isotope has its own different half-life. So there are certain examples. For example, we just learned that iodine has a half-life about of about eight days but there are elements where half-life is very short it's like in microseconds so the half-life is so short that the activity reduces really quickly and it decays very quickly uh, but there are also samples that have a very very long half-life and 
the that half life can be in weeks it could be in months it could be in years and sometimes also in millions of years so every radioactive isotope has its own half life but that half life remains constant so that uh, that means for iodine the half life will always be 8 and it will be only after 8 days that the number will become half now we can basically uh, show this decay process in the form of a graph on this graph we have activity on the y-axis you can also have the number of undecayed nuclei by the way and you will get the same shape of the graph and then on the x-axis you have the time now look at the shape of the curve this is called an exponential decay curve and the the deal with exponential graphs is that they will start at some value from the y-axis but never take them to zero the graph should not touch zero at all whenever you sketch a graph whenever you're required to sketch a graph always make sure that your graph stays above x-axis it will always get closer and closer to x-axis it keeps approaching the x-axis but it will never touch the x-axis okay uh, and then how do you find the half-life of the sample from a graph like this well let's say the original number of nuclei or, or the original activity was 40 now what is the half of 40 the half of 40 is 20 so you take 20 and you find the time when the activity will reduce to 20 and for iodine the half-life is 8 so you'll get the answer to 8 days now you can repeat the process again what is the half of 20 when you have 20 you get 10 so find the value of time again when the activity will be 10 and that is around 16 so another 8 days so obviously as we have discussed the half-life remains constant so after every 8 days the value is decreasing to half now sometimes in your exam you might get these numbers as slightly different you might get the values as slightly different sometimes you might get seven point four let's say for first uh, halving you get let's say 7.9 days and then for the next halving you might get 8.2 days and then for the third time when you do it you might get 8.1 days so what you will do is you will do this process on the same graph two or three times so let's say we can do it for another time the half of 10 is 5 and you take the graph and you find that at 24 days the value will half again so that means another 8 days and if you get these values are slightly different let's say you get 7.9 days and then 8.1 days and at 8.2 days what you will do is you will take the average of those values to give your final answer of half-life alright now when you draw this uh, when you perform this experiment in real life in a lab what you will find is that the graph uh, will not actually be a very very smooth curve there will be some fluctuations in the graph so in that case what we do is we plot all the points and then through all those points we draw a curve of best fit now the curve is still smooth but the points were not falling all on the curve and there were there were slight fluctuations now these fluctuations basically are because of the randomness the random nature of radioactive decay now this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next part.